In this presentation, we'll be going over the graded exercise skills testing form for the graded exercise skills test that you have coming up in week 15. That's uh, at least you know a week and a half or so from now for most of you. Um, and this will be basically the last time that you actually meet in person in lab. It's the week before finals. So to navigate to this assignment page or to look at the rubric, we'll, from the home page for 3D2 lab, we'll go to modules. And then we'll scroll down, and this isn't actually published just yet, you know, not published, but uh, you would then click the GXT skills testing form, which is under the week 14, ACSM prediction module page, and then you just download this form. And this is what it looks like over here on the right. All right, so this is the exact document that, you know, the instructors will look at and have in front of them, and overall this assignment is 90 points. So what will happen beforehand is, the week before at least, the instructor, your instructor will kind of set up time blocks for at least groups of two to three people, uh, groups of two to three people will come in, and you'll those people will just come in during that time block, they'll do the great exercise skills test, and then leave. So you only need to be there for basically 20 minutes that day. And it can be any time block within that, you know, hour and 50 minute period that we actually meet. So this will be basically the only time we won't be in the split group format type. Uh, I'm probably at least going to use all of the time block and I'll just say, okay, we'll start at, you know, if I, if I have an 8 a.m. I don't have an 8 a.m. But if I had an 8 a.m. I'd say, okay, let's, let's do a group at 8 o'clock. All right. Okay. 8 to 8.20 or, uh, and then, you know, the next group would be 8.20 to 8.40 and, and so on. All right, enough about that and more on to the skills testing, skills test itself. So what will happen, and if you're in a group of two, you'll have one person that will actually be uh, on the treadmill. They will be the sort of the person that you're doing the test on. Uh, and then you'll have someone taking blood pressure and getting questions asked of them, and they are going to be the person evaluated at that time, the person that is taking blood pressure and so on. The person on that that's on the treadmill, they are just kind of along for the ride, or they are just, uh, you know, not doing too much. They just have to do a couple things, nothing that involves the skills test of them being evaluated at that time. So, beforehand, we have someone rest for, you know, a couple minutes, we're not going to, we may not have enough time to do, you know, the full five minutes, but we'll have people rest for a good, good three minutes or so at least. And then we'll get blood pressure on them in that time. I usually ask a few questions of the person that's doing blood pressure. So I'll ask some of these setup questions, like I'll ask them, uh, ECG placement, absolute relative contraindications, the great exercise skills testing and that, and so on. I'll ask them some of those more, uh, background type questions before even getting into the blood pressure. And then once that person's been rested, we will then go ahead and get blood pressure. Blood pressure will be taken with a double set of stethoscopes. You've probably remember them. You may have seen them before, should have probably seen them before. And it's just basically so the instructor and the student that's being evaluated can hear. The student that is being evaluated will take the blood pressure, so they will physically, you know, pump up the uh, sphygmomanometer and listen and uh, place the stethoscope to listen for the brachial artery. And if you know, uh, you'll get at least, uh, sorry, at most, you'll get three chances to get it correct for both. You know, you get three chances for rest, three chances for exercise, and you can be within eight millimeters of mercury for the systolic and four millimeters of mercury for the diastolic. So as long as you're within that range, you're good. And then when we get into the um, skills test, uh, I mean, sorry, when we get into the blood pressure, you uh, basically, when you, you'll go ahead and take it. If you take it and you don't, you know, get it correct, the instructor will just say, okay, well, we'll take it again. Uh, and then if you get it correct, well, then you just move on if you get both of them correct. Uh, 
so let's say you overall get you know systolic right on one of them and then diastolic was wrong the entire time or whatever you get points for the systolic so you get some points overall but you just wouldn't miss out on the syst on the sorry, sorry on the diastolic and then moving into the exercise we'll then get somebody walking and they'll walk for uh just i usually just do the stage one of the bruce i don't even do stage two but it's an option and so we just do stage one of the Bruce, 1.7 miles per hour, 10% grade. And we will then have you do blood pressure while they're walking at that stage at, you know, two minutes. And so during that time, while the person is just walking, we're not just, you know, standing around there and uh, talking about anything, you know, uh, just random stuff. We are actually going to be doing some more of these questions throughout. Uh, so questions one, two, and three will all be done kind of in a more timing manner, whereas questions four through eight will be kind of asked throughout. So question four is just, you know, identify standard 12 lead ECG electrode prep and placement. So these are basically just the, let me go back for a second here. ECG placement prep. If you literally just look at this form, figure doesn't have all of them, but if you look at, you know, electrode placement, if you can literally tell me or the, your instructor these things, like, well, so each student will get a few of these to do. If I just asked you for V1, V2, and V3, just, you know, tell me those ones only. But if you just tell me the exact placement descriptions of these, you know, fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternum for V1, fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum for V2, and then V3 is half the distance between V2 and V4, that, you know, that's, that's perfect. That's all we need. Um, no need to complicate things. Uh, I know for things like like the right leg, right arm, left leg, left arm, we didn't do exactly these things. Well, well we did, but we had a little bit more different manner. We went about it a little bit differently in how we placed them. Uh, you can use either. Either is acceptable. Um, so yeah, not much to say about that. And then, uh, so, so question four has nothing to do with ECG interpretation or anything like that. It's just electrode placement. So placing the pads on somebody, how to do that, how to get to those locations. And then absolute or relative contraindications to graded exercise testing. These are reasons not to do a test on somebody. And you can find them in your book. You should know where they are by now. Um, again, these are reasons not to do a test on someone. So we're not even, we're considering starting one and we're just, you know, looking at over patient history and all that. We're seeing, okay, do they have any contraindications to doing exercise test? Do they, don't they, are we good to start? That sort of thing. And then for six, correctly describe speed and grade changes of the Bruce protocol. So we'll, I generally will ask within, you know, stage one, two, three, or four, we'll ask the, uh, just, you know, speed and grade at a one, one of those stages generally, or another question I like to ask sometime is what is the percent change in grade, uh, each stage? Starts out at 10, goes to 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. So from that, you can kind of deduce, oh, it changes by 2% each stage. Uh, so it's another question I like to sometimes ask. Uh, but for the most part, those are generally the only things I ask because there's not too much you can do with that. And then make sure you can describe the timing of certain measurements, such as heart rate, ECG, blood pressure, RPE, VO2, angina, VE, VO2, and, and tons of other things. But make sure you can describe them for rest, exercise, and or recovery of a Bruce grade exercise test protocol. So basically how we did it. Uh, because that form, you know, will show, you know, for the most part, when we took all those measurements. And then lastly, correctly identify either absolute or relative indicators for stopping a graded exercise test. So these are reasons we're already started. We are, we have someone up on the treadmill. We have someone doing exercise. These are reasons to absolutely or relatively stop. 
that test. So for five and eight, I will only, at least myself, and I try to have the other instructors do this as well, have them ask, you know, to absolute, to relative, or, or, that's not and or, that's or, that's or, one absolute, and one relative. So it's, you know, one of three combinations. You got two absolute, two relative, or one of each. That's, that's at least how I do it. Uh, it's just because there's a lot, a lot of those to go through. And uh, we, we can only ask so many. And then there's only so many that, you know, given a group size, you can have people kind of relay to you. So there's not a whole heck of a lot in the skill test that's uh, going to be super complicated. At least it shouldn't be super complicated. But just make sure you are, can get blood pressure adequately. If you need additional preparation for this, I s recommend you use, you know, next week in lab. Because next week in lab is going to be relatively short in terms of, you know, the stuff that we're doing. Uh, actually going in and, you know, taking blood pressure, having some time to do that. We will have some time next week. If you need more, uh, just contact your instructor and ask them, hey, I'd like to practice some more. Um, make sure you can bring a friend along or one of the other students in class so that you can both practice or if you can, you know, practice on them so you don't have to practice on you know, your instructor. Um, and then just to reiterate for number four, you're just literally saying out loud how to get to these locations. You're not actually placing any. So we're not actually putting any electrodes on anyone and hooking them up, anything like that. We're just verbally describing these locations. So if you have any questions, please contact your lab instructor. Otherwise, uh, good luck on the skills test.